All right, let's look at the basics on how to work a Punnett square. So a Punnett square is a tool that we use when we are studying genetics to look at the predicted offspring of a cross between two parents. So a Punnett square you've probably seen look something like this. Um, inside of a Punnett square, so we have the offspring go in, in the center will be um, So the offspring are what are going to be predicted in the center. The parents go on the outside, but it's not just the parents' genes that go out on the other side, it's actually the gametes. So let's do an example. Let's say that we're looking at a trait for the height of a plant. Let's say capital T is going to be tall. And then lowercase t is going to be short. Um, I like to make sure that my capital and my lowercase always look very different, otherwise the Punnett squares can get very confusing um, very quickly. So in this case, t is dominant. Well, that's why we capitalize it. Tall is dominant. And so whenever an individual has a capital T and a lowercase t, they're going to be tall. So let's do a cross between... Um, two tall individuals. One individual whose genotype is big T, big T, and another one who is big T, little t. So you don't have to just draw a 2 by 2 Punnett square for everything. Um, the way a Punnett square always works is we want to look at the gametes that these individuals can produce, and then that's what we want to cross. So this individual has two alleles, big T and big T. That means no matter what the gametes, so the egg or the sperm, that they make is always going to include a big T. They can't make a gamete with a little t in it. This individual is always going, is, has two different alleles. They have a big T and a little t. So they have two different options. They can either make a gamete with a big T or they can make a gamete with a little t. I'm drawing them in circles to represent that these are either in an egg or maybe if this is dad, this is a sperm cell. So the Punnett square I need for this cross, I don't actually need a two by two Punnett square. I can draw a one by two Punnett square. Each gamete gets its own row or column. So if this is mom and this was the only egg that she can make, I'm going to put that here on the left. If this was dad and he's heterozygous, right, because he's got big T or little t, that means he can make a big T or a little t gamete. So each gamete gets its own row or column. Then when we combine on a Punnett square, we just bring this one over, so big T from the left, and then we bring this one down, big T from the top. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Big T over from the left, and then little t from the top. Um, typical rules, you always write the capital letter first. Um, it doesn't really matter where the big T and the little t are. You're always going to write big T, then little t. So these are all of the possible offspring from this cross. So these are tall, and then these are tall as well. So they're going to have 100% tall offspring. Let's do another example. So let's use another trait, maybe for eye color. So if big B means brown eyes and little b means blue eyes. So let's cross two individuals, one with brown eyes and one with blue eyes. So this individual is homozygous dominant. They have both alleles are the same, homozygous, and they're both dominant. So they're going to have brown eyes. This person, let's say this is the female, 
can only produce one kind of gamete, the egg, right? And the egg that she makes is going to have to have a big B. There's no little Bs in her genotype. If this is the male, this male can only produce one type of sperm, little B. I'll draw the sperm cell. Um, because there's no big Bs in his genotype. So the number of gametes that that individual can produce tells me the number of rows and columns I need on my Punnett square. So for this cross, I only actually need a one by one Punnett square. The only allele that mom can give is a big B, and the only allele dad can give is a little B. So big B, little B, all of their offspring are gonna be 100% brown eyes. Let's do another cross using these. This time we'll do um, some heterozygotes. So an individual who's big B, little b, and another one who's big B, little b. This person, how many gametes, how many different types of gametes can they make? Two. She can either make a big B or a little b. Same thing for this individual, let's say this is dad. He can either make a sperm cell with a big B or a little b. Let's give him a tail. All right. So each individual has two options for the number of gametes. Remember, gametes are what go on the Punnett square. So now I need a two by two Punnett square, which is probably going to be um, what you I remember Punnett square is looking like normally. So we'll put mom over here, big B, little b, dad, big B, little b. And then we just bring these over from the left, big B, and from the top, big B. Start over here from the left, big B, from the top, little b. And then for this one, I'm going to write the capital B first. I'm going to come down from the top first, big B, and then write the lowercase b. It just helps keep things um, uh, straight. And then little b, little b. For this one, we have one, two, three out of four that are going to be brown eyes, and only one that has blue eyes. So this would be a three to one ratio of brown to blue. So this is how we use Punnett squares to predict the outcome. It actually is based on the gametes, right? So that's what's going right here, the gametes. And then all of these guys are the potential offspring, the babies.